Hi and welcome back to this week's coaching video. When I came across this article, I was like, you know what? I have got to share this with you guys. So, it is five ways to survive your next family gathering. And I thought this was very appropriate because we are here at the holiday season and sometimes we go out and visit family and things can get just a little bit out of control for some families. I'm so thankful that it's not my family but some of you are experiencing that. So let's jump right on in. In the Uncle Ramus story of the Tar Baby, Br'er Rabbit picks a fight with a lifelike doll made out of tar and turpentine. The Tar Baby is so gluey that when the rabbit punches it, his fists get stuck. He tries to kick his way free, which traps his feet, then finishes off with an infuriated headbutt that renders him utterly helpless. And you might be thinking, Michelle, what in the world does that have to do with your topic for the day? So many people, for many people, family get-togethers require st strategies for staying out of sticky situations. That's what all of that um, adds up to. Before you head over the river and through the woods, give some thought to the following suggestions. Number one, so strategy number one, give up hope. Now, you might be thinking, what? Not Miss Positive telling us to give up hope. So most of us go home for the holidays thinking, God, grant me the ability to change the things I cannot accept. Even if we don't consciously realize it, we want our families to, stop, to cease, and cease and desist from all the things that affect us like fingernails on a chalkboard. We don't ask much just socially appropriate behavior and minimal reparations for the more damaging incidents in our past. Although, come to think of it, things would certainly go better if our relatives would listen openly, communicate honestly, and agree with us on all significant issues and possibly offer money. The hope that our families will act perfectly or even reasonably well sets us up to whack the tar baby to be incapacitated by the dysfunctions will almost certainly encounter that will almost certainly encounter before you meet your relatives this season take a few moments to sit quietly and acknowledge what you wish they were like then prepare to accept them even if they behave as they have always done in the past it, it at best you may be surprised to find that they actually are changing that some of your wishes have come true at worst you'll feel regrettably detached from your kinfolk as you watch them play out their usual psychosis. Now, I'm going to use a different word. Instead of wishing, honey, you need to pray. Before you leave your house, you need to pray. The night before, heck, the week before, maybe in the month before, you need to pray and ask God, Lord, grant me the ability to go and spend time with my family and not have them act like blatant fools. Grant me the ability to spend time with my families and not have them bring up my past. Oh, but here's a good one. Grant me the ability to spend time with my family and not have them constantly bring up. Baby, when you gonna get married? Thankfully, that's not my issue, but for some people that is an issue. So all I'm saying is pray big. Y'all know I'm always telling you to pray big, pray big, that when you go spend time with your family this holiday season, they're not going to do any of that stuff that just gets on your last good sanctified nerve. Strategy number two, set secure boundaries. Given that your family members will probably go on being their same old selves, you need to decide how much contact with them that you really want to have. There are certain relatives you simply just cannot tolerate, and you know who those people are. Are there others that you can handle in group settings, but not one-on-one? -on -one? So you may have family members that you don't want to be with them one-on-one, -on -one, but in a group setting, it's all good because you don't have to deal with them like that. You're, you're talking to the group as a whole. How much time and intimacy with your family is enough? How much is too much? These are questions that you're going to have to ask yourself. I cannot determine that for you. Only you know which auntie and which uncle get on your last good sanctified nerve and you can't stand them but a hot minute. But you can deal with them when all the family is around because chances are there's so many family members that you won't have to personally interact with them. Now your past may cross on your way to the buffet table or to get, get something to drink 
but at least you don't have to spend the whole evening with just those individuals. So it is crucial to answer these questions before, not during. Did you hear what I just said? You need to answer these questions before, not during a family gathering. Prior to the event, think through various boundary options until you come up with a scenario that makes you feel comfortable. Would you be more enthusiastic about a get-together if you plan to leave after no more than four hours? And if that works for you, do that. You say, okay, well, you know, let me look at my watch. It's now whatever time it is, four hours from now, you know what, I really have to go because I have a thing or I have another event that I need to get to. Or, you know, do you feel comfortable only staying three hours, two hours, or even one hour? Would you breathe easier if you rented a car so that you could get away without relying on your relatives for transportation? That is something you need to think about. And if you don't want to rent a car, you can always do Uber or Lyft. Would you help, would you help would it help to have a friend call you on your cell phone halfway through the evening? I'm not going to lie to you guys. I've done that. Not with family. Let me be clear. Not with family. But I've been out and I'm thinking, you know what? I really don't want to be here. So you send that little text that says, hey, text me in about 10 minutes and then tell me I need to come home. Send. And they respond back, okay. You're like, yes, my out is finally here. 10 minutes later, the phone rings. Hello? Hey. Oh, okay, okay, no worries. Tell them I'm on my way. All right, okay, I'll see you shortly. All right, thanks, bye-bye. And you click off, hey, you know what? I really have got to go. That was that was my house, that was my job, whatever. And I really need to go and, and do what I need to do. And it's a shame that we have to do this. It really, really is, but sometimes it's necessary. That way folks don't get in their feelings because you, you're running off, okay? I'm sorry, I digress. Let me go back to what I was saying. So I said, would it help to have a friend call you on your cell phone? It could be a friend, family member, heck, it could be an enemy. Who cares? As long as they call you halfway through the evening, providing an excuse for a graceful exit. Because sometimes we want to exit gracefully. That way the people don't talk about you for leaving early and then rushing out the door. Strategy number three, lose control. You're in the middle of a holiday feast, enjoying your favorite pie and your eggnog when your mother leans over and whispers, Honey, have you tried Weight Watchers? First of all, y'all, that is so inappropriate. It, please don't do that. Please do not do that. You might feel desperate to make mom recognize all the hard work, uh, recognize all the hard-won truths you've learned about the the value and the beauty of your body. You'll want to argue, to explain, to get right in there and force your mother to approve of your appearance. However, remember this. Any attempt that you make to control other people actually puts you under their control. If you decide you can't be happy until your mother finally understands you, her dysfunction will rule, rule your life, okay? You can spend the next 20 years trying to, to please her so much that she just have to accept you and she still might not. Okay. The only way you can avoid getting stuck in other people's craziness is to follow codependency author Melody Beattie's counterintuitive, counterintuitive advice. Unhook from their systems by refusing to try to control them. Don't violate your own code of ethics. I'm sorry, don't violate your violate your codes of values and ethics. But don't waste energy trying to make other people viol violate theirs. If soul searching has shown you that your mother's opinions are wrong for you, as are your grandfather's bigotry, your sister's new religion, your cousin's alcoholism, hold that truth in your heart. Hold it here. Whether or not your family members validate it, hold it here. You don't have to make them see what it is that they're refusing to see. Feel what you feel. Know what you know. And set your relatives free to do the same. That's the takeaway right there. I, I can end the video on that note. Let me say that again. Feel what you feel. Know what you know. And then set your relatives free to do the same. If Aunt Lucy thinks that you're going to be alone all your life, let her think that. You don't have to argue her down and say, no, there's, there, the right man is out there. He just hasn't found me yet. Mm -mm, zip this, zip it. You don't have to try to convince her. You don't. Let her think what she wants to think, okay? If your Uncle Bob thinks that your cousin Terry is a bum, tell Terry, look, let him think what he wants to think. Terry knows he's not. 
you just y'all that's some powerful stuff right there if you've been deeply wounded by your family you can stop trying to control them by accepting full responsibility for your healing okay i'm not suggesting that you shoulder all the blame but rather that you acknowledge i'm sorry y'all these lights are making my face itch that you and only you have the ability to respond to inquiry by seeking curses i'm sorry your yeah, injury by seeking curses instead of furthering pain whatever the situation accepting that you can control only your thoughts and actions will help you mend more quickly and thoroughly that i i cannot stress that enough and strategy number four become a, par a participant observer some social scientists use a technique called participation obs observation, meaning that they join groups of people in order to watch and report on whatever those people do. Okay? Decide you're not going to chime in. You're not going to offer anything. When Grandma Susie keeps uh, talking about, oh, when you're going to bring some grandbabies in for your mom and dad, sit back and just watch. You don't have to say a word. Sit in that corner and just watch everything that's going on. And I tell you, find some comedy in some of that stuff. Strategy number five, debrief. If your brother really gets you, or you have a family member or a friend that just really gets you, then you need to call them after family dinner. That Especially if you both survived it together. If you don't trust anyone who shares any of your DNA, report to a friend or a therapist. So, generally speaking, you can schedule a debriefing session for a few weeks for a few weeks after the holidays when everybody's schedule is back to normal. However, you should exchange phone calls with your debriefing partners within a day or so of the family encounter just to reconnect with the outside world and to head off any annoying little problems such as ill-considered Ill suicide. I cannot stress you guys, please do not suffer in silence. Whatever it is that you're going through, no matter how big or, or small, Find somebody that you can talk to. You should have an accountability partner. And if you don't have a family member or a close friend that you can talk to, then you might need to talk to your pastor. Talk to one of the associate ministers at your church. You can talk to a therapist. And if all else fails and you feel comfortable enough, you can always reach out to me. Please don't suffer in silence. That just breaks my heart when I hear about someone who's who tried, who attempted suicide and even worse, yes, though those had worse yet, those that have succeeded because they kept all this stuff bottled up and they didn't talk to anybody. So please don't let that be you, okay? Let me do a quick recap and I promise I'll let you be. So today I talked about five ways to survive your next family gathering. I opened it up with the story of the of um of the a Br'er Rabbit who picks a fight with a lifelike doll that's actually made out of tar and how he finds himself stuck because he tried to just do too much. You know what I'm saying? And so I gave you five tips. So number one, five strategies, I'm sorry. Your first strategy, strategy was to give up hope. You've got to give up hope that your family members and or close friends are going to do the things that you want them to do. You've got to give up hope that they're going to act a certain way because chances are they're not. They've been that way forever and that they're just not going to change. It's who they are. So give up hope trying to control how they act and what they say. Now, you, you can set boundaries. Let me say this. You can set boundaries, and you should set boundaries. Never allow anybody to talk to you any kind of way. It doesn't matter whether it's family or not. Set boundaries and tell people what you will and will not allow. You say, hold up, wait a minute. We can talk about everything under the sun, but that particular subject right there is off limits. It is off limits. And if you can't respect that, I will gladly pick up my hunches and take it on out the door. Set boundaries. Strategy number two, set secure. I'm sorry. Set, strategy number two is set secure, be, secure boundaries. Strategy number one was give up hope because sometimes you have to give up hope on those people that just are not going to change. Okay. So you set secure boundaries, and what I just said a few minutes ago, set boundaries. Let people know what's off limits. If if you come to a family gathering and every time you turn around, you're at the topic of discussion because you're still single. Oh, you know, your cousin Marjorie has been married for 10 years now. She's so happy. <laughs> Whatever. That, that set of boundaries. Guess what? We're not going to talk about her. We're not going to talk about cousin Margaret. Or we're not going to talk about cousin Bob. We're not doing any of that. Don't compare me to anybody. I am me. 
Let me be me. My personal life is off limits. My financial life is off limits. Who I'm dating is off limits. Set boundaries. And then you've got to make people respect those boundaries. Yes, you love these people, but you have to make them respect your boundaries. And if they cannot respect your boundaries, like I said, pick up your things and go. Don't sit there and allow people to treat you any kind of way. Mm -mm. Strategy number three, lose control. And we talked about how your, you've got to stop trying to control everything that people in your family say. Because you're going to have, you got to lose control of trying to control everybody because they're going to say and do whatever they want. Now, again, you set boundaries and you let them know what's on, what's off limits. You've got to do that, but you've got to lose the control, lose that, that thinking because I'm that kind of person too, where I want to control everybody, but I know I cannot do that. So I've had to learn to lose that control. Because you can't control what anybody says or do. You cannot control what they say or do, but you can control how they treat you, okay? And then strategy number four was become a, part a participant observer. Sit back and just observe. Sit back and just watch everything. Take it all in. And sometimes this will give you a better understanding of your family. But just, yeah, just, just sit back and just observe everything. Strategy number five, we talked about debriefing. And debriefing is where you have a prayer partner, a pastor, a family member, a sibling, somebody that you can sit down and talk to about this family gathering and how it was a disastrous mess. And you can talk about how someone made you feel. You can talk about how you felt. You know, you sit down and say, hey, you know, I went to family dinner and uh, cousin Bob started in on why I'm single and then cousin Pam jumped in and they just started to attack me and I just feel so overwhelmed and then sometimes especially with that 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 topic it can, it can make people a little sad especially around the holiday season if they don't have anyone special in their lives and sometimes people do start thinking about committing suicide honey that would be the furthest thing from my mind because I'm enjoying life you can talk about me all you want to well I have a boo-boo but I'm not married yet but it's coming though but I digress so have somebody that you can deep breathe, deep breathe with, where you can sit down and talk about everything. You can say, you know what, A, B, C, D, E, F, G happened, and this is how each one of those things made me feel. Talking to somebody else can help you sort out your feelings. And like I said, if you don't have anybody else that you can talk to, you can always contact me. We can set up some, some time to sit and just talk, because I want you to be whole. I want you to be whole every day, but especially during the holiday season. Very tricky when you are not married, sometimes not even dating, maybe life is not going that great for you at the moment, maybe you're not working, maybe you, you're, you're staying on somebody's couch, whatever it may be, it can just become so stressful when family puts unnecessary stresses on us, okay? So I want you guys to enjoy the holiday season. I want you to enjoy being you. I want you to love yourself where you are as you work towards getting to where you want to be. Thank you so much to my newest subscribers. And if you happen to come upon my channel by accident, I always say there are no accidents. Please be sure to hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to tap that bell so you don't miss anything as I'm uploading a lot of content during the month of December. For those of you that continue to support me in all that I do, I love you guys to the moon and back. I truly, truly do. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. It's not something I have to say. I say it because that's how I feel. If you know me, then you know I don't use that term love loosely at all so again that's all i have for you guys i want you to have a wonderful holiday season do not let family members and or friends get under your skin and just drive you crazy because again if they do you look at your watch hey you know what it's getting late it's time for me to go it's been real see you guys mean it <laughs> even if you don't say it and then get on up out of there okay because you do not have to spend time where you're made to feel like you're an outcast or you're an alien or alien or 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 you're not wanted or whatever the case may be. Say your goodbyes, keep it moving. If you can only stand being with some family members for an hour, stay an hour. Really spend time with the family members that you do get along with. If you can only do two, do two hours. If you can only do three, do three hours. Whatever it is that works for you, make it happen so that you have a wonderful holiday season. So until next time, take care.